Yeah. So uh, today we're going to be talking about preventive measures. Um, and these are things to just understand to help us just be saved. Amen. Do you know none of us are going to heaven unless Jesus excuses us? Yeah, nobody in here is going to see God unless Jesus excuses or pardons us. Did you know that? So you know that you, you can't be good enough? Amen. You can't be good enough. Folks are scared to say that because they say, well, they're they going to just do whatever they want to do. Not if you want to get to heaven. <laughs> that, I didn't say that. But you can't be good enough. That's like you telling your child, you know, there's nothing you can do to stop me from loving you. Like you can't, there's nothing you can do. And then he said, okay, well then I'm gonna go do everything. No, that's not how that works. You give him unconditional love, but then you also give him rules. Amen. The rules don't disqualify him from the unconditional love because it's unconditional, but there are still rules. That's why everything is so messed up now because folks don't have fathers in the home to teach them that. Yeah. And that's, that's you know, that, that's another problem, another message for another day. But yeah, so unless God pardons us all, nobody, I mean, unless Jesus pardons us, nobody's going to see God. We all go to hell without Jesus excusing us and saying, even though you weren't good enough, I'm going to let you in anyway. Amen. Amen. Sounds kind of weird, don't it? <laughs> but that's the truth. That's the truth. And though we try our best and we try to live like we need to live because we want to minimize dysfunction in this journey. Amen. 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 But we still have to know that unless Jesus say come in, we're not getting in. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So... These are some preventive measures to help you in your walk um, as we walk this walk. AdamandBeliever.com forward slash pre preventive measures dot PDF if you want to follow along. But preventive measures. They used to say, somebody said, an ounce of a pound of, what? Ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. No? Is that right? Sound about right, huh? Yeah, ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Right? So you wouldn't need the pound of cure if you had taken the ounce of prevention. Okay, yeah, that is right. Yeah, so it's better to prevent. Amen. So if we can learn some things that will help us prevent certain things from happening, we will have an easier walk. Amen. Giving thanks and praise to God on a regular basis is good for many reasons. One reason is that it glorifies God for who he is and how powerful he is. Amen? Now, let me tell y'all something. Y'all the men of ABC and, you know. So, when we giving thanks and praising God, y'all got to be at the forefront. You ain't lifting your hands, your son's not gonna lift their hands. You ain't yelling out his name and yelling thank you, your son's not gonna do it. And then how dare you go to the football game and the basketball game, you the loudest one. You come back to church, you horse. Hey, pastor, yeah, you know, we had a game the other day. And you know how I get when we at the games. Yeah, I know how you get at the games. But when you in here, you looking around during the worship time. Hey, see? Well, first of all, you're not going to overcome sin if you can't give God praise and thanks. So you can't be, amen. Your wife needs to see that. You know your wife will trust you more if you can lift your hands and give God praise. She'll have more confidence in you if she can see you truly praising the Lord. Amen. Yes, sir. 
You know, and some I know we all from different backgrounds. Maybe you came from a church where they just light candles. <laughs> and hum. <laughs> you come from the church where there are no instruments. We just, we our bodies. Our bodies are the instrument. I'm the drums. <laughs> I mean, whatever church you came from, but, but that's okay. You, you at ABC now. So at ABC, we believe in the men leading. We are leaders. The men going to lead here. Okay? The men, we all leaders here. So when it's time for worship, that should be some deep bass in the audience. The voices of God's men. You got to do it. You, it. It has to be you leading that. You lead that. That's who we are. We're leaders. So you want your, your, your children to follow. You want your wife to follow. So you lift your hand. You give God praise. You make some noise for the Lord. Amen. And don't give it all to the NFL. That's right. That's right. Amen. Because that's not fair. You get nothing from that. You get nothing from that. You enjoy it, and now the season is over. What you doing? You flipping channels trying to find something to cheer at. You watching the fishing, fishing channel, cheering at the fish. Oh, he caught a big one. You just, and you don't have nothing. God, God deserves the praise. Amen. Amen. So, giving thanks and praise on a regular basis glorifies God for who he is and how powerful he is. Another reason I always give thanks to God is because it reminds us of what he has done. You've given him praise talking about what he's done. Look what he did for you. First of all, look at the rest of your family. Look at, look back home. Look at what you came out of. Look at what God did for you. So when we give God praise, it reminds us of that. It reminds us of that. This reminder keeps us knowing just how far we have come and how important it is to steer clear of where we once were. So see how praise and thanks does? You lifting your head and hands and thanking God and lifting your heads up to him and yelling out thanks and praise to him. It's reminding you of where you came from and also reminding you that you don't want to go back. Right? First Corinthians, first Chronicles 16 and 8. Give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known what? His deeds among the people. Many of us would love to just totally forget who we were, once were, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with you forgetting that old man, that old jive turkey that you once were. Nothing wrong with that. But we must never forget how sin once had us bound and how God delivered us. Amen? God has delivered you. You've made progress. There is no way you come here every Sunday, uh, every week, and you haven't made progress. That's progress within itself. Yeah, you find yourself turning stuff off. Oh, I can't watch that. Too many booties in it. I can't watch that. Oh, no. I can't watch that. That's the old me. I can't watch that. Too much cussing. Oh, man, no. That's, that's too much cussing. Amen. You know, I can't do it. You, but you used to cook. But we must never forget how sin once had us bound and how God delivered us. Knowing the power of sin or knowing the power sin had over us and how powerful God was in delivering us does two things. Keeps us humble yet mindful. Meaning we don't forget it, but we're not going to get beside ourselves. Amen. You will stop judging folks when you remember. That's all you got to do is remember. You won't have nothing to say about somebody else's struggle when you remember your own. 
Amen. That's the kind of church we going to be. We ain't sitting back taking shots and thinking we are something when we are nothing. Amen. First Chronicles 16 and 12. Remember his marvelous works that he had done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. It's good to remember God judging you, allowing your own sins to find you out. Because that was the only way you was going to stop. Oh boy, nobody want to clap at that. That's the only way you was going to stop. God just can't crack the door so somebody can see it now. Get you under control so you could be better. Amen. Amen. Amen? Yeah, so you need to remember his marvelous works that he has done, his wonders, and the judgments of his mouth. The enemy would love for us to completely forget where we once were. So we can't stop the trappings that could possibly ensnare us again. No, oh, don't you be so saved that you forget where you once were. Yeah, because every time you give God praise, you ought to remember, God, thank you for bringing me to this place. Because without you, I would be a rich. And not just a rich, but a, what kind of rich? A rich undone. Whatever that means. It just sounds bad. When we get overly confident in our ability and our own power, we are vulnerable to the past or to our past and the old man starts what? Peeking around the corner. Once we get full of ourselves and think we are better than somebody else, overly confident in our own ability and our willpower. See, because your ability and your willpower don't get you into heaven. You got to be pardoned. You got to be excused. Amen. Because no matter how good you get now, you wasn't always good. So we don't even want to look at it that way. Galatians 5 and 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and then be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Amen. No matter what you were delivered from, you can still be tempted by it if you put yourself in striking distance of it. Amen. I don't care if you ain't smoked a black and mild in 10 years. Don't you be hanging out with nobody that starts smoking one. Because that taste will come back in your mouth. Amen. Your lips will start changing colors. Once again, you had just got the pigmentation right. And now you back. Amen. And don't be around any kind of smoking. Well, that, you know, that, that don't tempt me. Hookah pipe and uh, and uh, <laughs> we no no because if you get around strike if you get in striking distance of it you can be tempted by it. Amen. 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 It's so funny if it's crazy friends that used to take you down. You get rid of all of them. Wake up one day and one just inbox you. Hey man, what you been up to, Doc? Where you been, man? Then you look down and you holding a tall boy. Where did this come from? Oh my goodness, just from an inbox? He sent it through the inbox. <laughs> like, How did we get this far? That quick, but it happens that quick. We are humans with a sinful nature, which is a recipe for disaster if we do not put our faith and trust in God's power to save us from ourselves. Do you know God has to save you from yourself? Amen. It's as easy as you eating the wrong thing. You ate the wrong thing that day and your thoughts went south. The chemicals in your body just acted up. Amen. You, and, and so you need God's power because his power can save us from ourselves. 
Paul said in Romans 7 and 23, but I see another law in my body, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. He says the law of sin is in his members, in his body. That's the sinful nature. So in order to combat this, we got to make sure that we stay away from what we used to be tempted by. Amen. Look at somebody and say, you're not strong enough. Brother, don't test. Look at somebody else and say, don't test yourself. Don't test yourself. Why would you? Just be good. Amen. The devil has no new tricks. So he keeps doing what he is good at. What is he good at? The past. Whatever, whatever got you before is what he will use to get you again. Yeah, he don't have to come up with nothing new. It's always the old stuff. Your deliverance was a blessing, but that doesn't stop him. He don't respect your deliverance. You didn't know that? Yeah, you can say you delivered all day and these hands going to come after you to see. Yeah. And you got to turn around and say, hey, hands in the name of Jesus, get your long fingers away because I am delivered. Amen. Devil come back, you got to tell him, say, I'm delivered. First Peter 5 and 8, be sober, be vigilant, because the, your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about doing what? He never stops seeking whom he may devour. Okay? So we try our best. We want to live the life that is pleasing unto God. But we don't want to think we can do it without God. Amen. Amen. That's why it's important. When the praise and the worship is going forth, that's why it's important that you engage in that. Because you're telling something to God and then you're saying something to the kingdom of darkness. When it's observing you, worshiping God, being totally dedicated to God. Well, pastor, you know, when that time come, I just have a problem lifting my hand. And that means there's a problem internally because I've seen you lift your hands at the game. I've heard you yell at the game. So what's happening in here? Amen. 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 And I'm not saying you got to throw chairs and hit one of my cameras. <laughs> don't prove. Don't be trying to prove that. But you ought to come out of yourself. Amen. And give God a praise. Oh, so you just want us to do it so you can see it. No, you do it so the devil can see it. Amen. 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 It's important that you do that. That shows the devil where you are with this. Can I, can I keep preaching? Okay. So these are the things that you got to take preventive measures against. And these, this is going to bless your life. First off, familiar spirits. Leviticus 19 and 31. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Whenever he's saying that, he's basically saying, don't make these other things your God. Now, when it comes to familiar spirit, that's all the Internet is full of. I, the, I mean, Instagram, if you go to what's that, that swiping and get on one of them witches, they don't look like they, they don't look like this. Mm -mm. It's some old gal. Amen. Amen. Some old gal on there just looking galish. <laughs> she got the moon and the stars and the sun and everything. Trying to pull you out of your home. Into her digital space. That's all it is. Yeah, yeah. She trying to find a, a baby daddy. To pull you away from your family and complicate your life. Amen. 
Don't you slide in her DMs. Them the DMs of hell. Amen. It just ruined your life. You was playing with it. And you didn't know you can't play with a familiar spirit. That spirit's going to latch on to a weakness in you. It's going to latch on to a weakness in you. Clap on. You can't get it off. Yeah. And pull you down a rabbit hole. Yeah. That's the way familiar spirits work. Now, it wasn't that bad. I mean, it was bad in the Bible days or back when this was written, these scriptures and stuff. But now it's digital. So it's worse. Yeah, the devil is sending all kinds of stuff through digital means. And you have to contend with that. Amen. Amen. So you need to go whenever you, whenever you see it, you can go in a little corner and click the thing and say, you know, the little thing where it says, uh, I don't want to see this no more, or I don't want to see that. You got you to keep doing that and tell that alg algorithm to leave you alone. Amen. Tell the algorithm to leave you alone. It ain't no accident that that stuff is popping up. It's coming your way because it know or it thinks you want to see it. So you got to either tell it you don't want to see it or keep seeing it. Oh, man, I'll preach in here. It, 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 I'm telling you, you got to tell it. Man, I was on Facebook. I don't really be on Facebook. Watch the videos. Remember y'all like, you know, the Lord delivered. I'm delivered. Like, I ain't seen an a, a online fight in, since I told that story. I don't, I don't have to watch it. I went in that corner. I started, nope, nope. I don't want to see this no more. Nope, don't send this. No fight, nothing. But I do like watch, watching the bullfrog eat everything. That's awesome. I mean, they put whole chickens in there. And that bullfrog, he'll sit there. Then he'll jump and look at it. <laughs> I do like, you know, every now and then I want to see the bullfrog and I want to see the rats get stuck on the paper. That's great, too. That's great. They put the, they put the steak out there. Every rat. Rats are so stupid. They see rats stuck and they still run out there on that paper. Then they get stuck, try to get loose. And what I like is when they try to get loose and then accidentally that side. <laughs> what, what, what's that side stick? It's a wrap. So, you know, there's a few things that are kind of entertaining when you don't have nothing else to do. But you got to tell that algorithm. You got to tell it. And I was watching, I think it was when I was watching the bullfrog or whatever, whatever, this, these witchy looking women, all tatted up in the face and the piercings and all that, kept coming through. I was like, man, what in the world? And that's when I learned the whole algorithm thing. I said, Lord, what in the world? And God said, they're getting sent to you. Somebody is sending that. Spirit, it's spiritual. And so I had to start doing that. And after you do it for a day or so, you, you know, it don't come back no more. But you got to make sure that you're telling that algorithm, not, not this per I'm not like that. Amen. I don't watch that stuff. <laughs> Amen. I'm not going to watch no ooh, witches. But familiar spirits, they mimic the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a comforter and brings comfort to us when our lives are in disarray. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. So when you feeling bad, you don't do what you used to do when you felt bad. When you feeling bad and you feel with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit makes you feel better the right way. That's a real comforter. But familiar spirits, they do the same, but they use sin and lie. Yeah, when you're feeling bad, they want to show you some porn and want you to masturbate or want you to slide in the DMs or just do something foul to make you feel better. Which, after that, gives you the worst feeling. You feel worse than you did before you started. Amen. That's what a familiar spirit does. It's a trick. These are spirits that people use to attack our senses and cause us to relive past experiences. Nothing feels worse than failing in a past experience that you had overcome. Amen. And that's what familiar spirits do. Try to make you fall the way you fell before. When our minds wander back into those places, our bodies will soon follow. 
I know I'm teaching. Amen. When our mind wanders back into those places, our bodies will soon follow. We must rebuke these spirits and do it quickly. Look at somebody say quickly. That's quick, fast, and in a hurry. We got to rebuke these spirits and do it quickly or we will find ourselves back where we used to be. Amen. Soul ties. First Corinthians 6 and 6. And you know, people say, I understand there's no biblical, really a biblical uh, use, usage of the word soul ties. It's not found in the Bible necessarily as soul ties, but it's found in the, in the Bible is 1 Corinthians 6 and 16. What? Know ye not? He which is joined to a harlot is one body. That sound like a soul tie to me. Do that sound like a soul tie? You're joined with your, your one body. Everybody you sleep with, everybody you've had sex with, everybody, you, all of those things you join in with them and become one with them. And it don't matter if it's digital, if you're watching them on a uh, digital porn or whatever, you are joining in with them and becoming one with them. And whatever she's experienced, hopefully not he's experienced, just whatever, that junk comes into your life and it has legal right to exist in your life. I'm just going to preach, uh, you know, I don't know how to do it any other way. Amen. Yeah. And so this is what a soul tie is. It's basically being joined like this. The Bible says, for two, saith he, shall be one flesh. He wasn't talking about marriage because he said harlot. But you can still be one flesh. The enemy will use these. To connect you with people against your own will. When you yoke up with people, it can form binding spiritual ties that hold you and many times pull you into things that you really didn't desire to be in. When you are delivered from bad relationships, you must break the ties spiritually and naturally. Amen. Hard-headedness. This is a spirit. <laughs> Hard-headedness. Proverbs 14 and 8. You know, my old pastor used to call this fool's heel. I've told, I've said that before. You gotta, you just gotta let him climb fool's heel. Can't nobody stop it. You climb fools here, you're going to tumble down. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 14 and 8. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. Understand his way. You got to understand your way. You got to understand. You got to know what you've been through, how you were raised, what's what you're vulnerable to. What are you weak to? What, what gets you in trouble? You got to know and understand your way. Because a prudent man predicts his future. That's what prudent is. You could not predict. You're considering your future. So you got to know your way and make sure your way doesn't hinder your future. Right? Amen. But the folly of a fool is deceit. He just crazy. Hard headedness. A hard head will always make you pay. When you have been there before and got burned, then you should know better. Amen. Every time you go to the club, somebody get killed. Now you in hell. Because you kept going. Every time you went, somebody got killed. The Grim Reaper was trying to tell you stay away from this club. <laughs> yeah every time you hang out with Bernie <laughs> y'all get pulled over every time you get pulled over every time fooling with Bernie you know old smoked out Bernie you know how they so smoked out that they voice just rasp yo child yeah dog you ready to go dog yeah. just I mean he just vocal cords just oysters. 
You tell you yeah, Doc. Yeah, man, you gonna, you gonna slide this week. You gonna slide on over. I, I'm not going nowhere with nobody talk like that. <laughs> Bernie. Yeah, but every time you go somewhere with him, he, he, he get in trouble. And you get in trouble. Yeah, that's a hard head. Look around you. Look at somebody say, look around you. Are you making the same bad decisions you made before? Are you being ambitious again? Are you serving self again? Are you chasing the Joneses again? Are you in sneak and creep mode again? These are all formulas for disaster that you should recognize because you are probably paying for previous hard-headedness right now. Yeah, you was keeping up with the Joneses, got you a tote the note Benz, paying two grand a month for a 97. You can't just take that back. You can't take that back. Tote the note don't want that. You paid for that with the down payment. They don't want that car back. You can't take it back. You paying for that right now and still worried about what somebody else got. The first of the month, well, if it's, it, what is it? It's weekly. Every, every other Friday, you ought to be in here jumping, hitting, hitting the, 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 the the AC vents. Because you got some sense now. You don't go back to that competing with people, getting in financial debt because of what somebody else has. Man, you better learn from your pastor. When I didn't have nothing, I would rejoice so hard with folks. Oh my God, I'd be happy for them. And it was real and it was genuine. I didn't never look at them like, man, we in my coming. Never. 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 I ne no, man, I don't want what other, because I don't know what you going through. I don't know what you going through for that. I got my own journey. Amen. So I'm not comparing myself to somebody else. Trying to get what somebody else had. That's hard headed, man. You being ambitious again. Amen. Or you being self serving again. Amen. You got five kids. You need to wait till all five of them get old enough for you go to buying stuff for yourself. See? That's all right. That's why they always say, Pastor, your kicks, you be just wearing the flyest kicks. Y'all didn't know. I waited until landing. How long has it been? Five years since I've been wearing? I would wear the same sneakers every day. I come up here and preach. Folks had to give me stuff. Because I look for my kids to have first. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go back and look at some of the pictures when my kids was coming up, boy. My wife, was, she be like, man, when you gonna change your shirt? Like, That's all right care about no Jordans and all that. I wasn't trying to, oh no. No, no, no. My first pair of Jordans was, I think we was in the old building and I bought a pair of Dwayne Wade's and they was fake. <laughs> they was fake. Had the little window on the side. What's the shoot? Remember that? They was fake. They was priced just right for me. I said, well, Dwayne ain't gonna ever see him. Hey, Amen. But yeah, man, I had to do, I did what I had to do. Because I wanted my children to have. And my wife to have. Amen. Man, please. Mm -mm. Nope. Don't get in that mode. These are all formulas for disaster that you should recognize because you are probably paying for previous hard-headedness right now. Why would you go there again? 
That's why when you lift your hands and give God that loud, thunderous praise, when you praise him like that, you'll start remembering the stupid stuff. Ooh, God, you saved me from some stupid stuff. Amen. Self-righteousness. Zechariah 4 and 6. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. This is not about our willpower. This is not us doing it. Self-righteousness. I just don't understand how certain people can take the position to judge everybody. As if they ain't done nothing. Amen. We must never believe we are impervious to temptation. This makes us self-righteous, which causes us to operate on willpower and not God's power. When you're self-righteous, you don't operate with God's power. Because God's power will tell you, you better get somewhere and sit down before you mess up. That's what God's power would do. God's power is the grand equalizer. None of us are worthy. Yeah, it equalizes everything and says no, nobody's worthy. That's why Jesus died. There would be no reason for God to send his only begotten son if some of us were worthy. Right? So God's power says none of us are righteous. No, not one. So then we got to work on our willpower when we are self-righteous. Willpower lasts but a season. It's only going to last a season. You can't make, look somebody say, you can't make it without the Holy Ghost. You will not make it without the Holy Ghost. It only lasts, willpower only lasts a season. Yeah, yeah. That's why, man, I ain't got time for them Hebrew Israelites and all them folks. All that old head talk. Brother, that's head talk. You're going to go fall into sin when you Leave the corner of downtown Dallas. Because it's all head talk and willpower. You can't do that, bro. We must never forget that it's by God's grace and power that we are able to be changed and not by sheer strength or might. Amen. None of us are good enough. That don't mean we go be heathens. Amen. 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 Yeah, we want to be on our best behavior because we want our families to be all right. Amen. Amen. We want to be on our best behavior. But we're not good enough. Triggers. Philippians 4 and 6. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, do what? Think on these things. That needs to be a time of every day that you think on these things. Philippians 4 and 8. Yeah. Yeah. That should be some time you give God every day where these are your thoughts. Either before your day starts at the end of your day, whatever it is. But you need to think on honest things and just things and pure things and lovely things and things that are of a good report. Especially after you've had a hard day dealing with all kinds of other foolishness and all that. You want to give God some time and you want some time for yourself so that you can think on good things. Amen. Amen. The more you think on good things, the more good things happen. You better know what triggers the old you. Remember the old you? Remember him? You better know what triggers the old you. God has changed your spirit and your soul, but your body is still your body. Amen. Certain triggers release memory pathways that can lead you back into bondage. Yeah. Yeah. If all the music you listened to was R. Kelly and uh, <laughs> you remind me of my Jeep. 
Yeah. You remember what you was doing back when that song was out? Amen. And you in a restaurant and that song come on? Better hurry up and eat. Amen. You better hurry up and eat. That did just happen. We was, where was we at? In Detroit. We was at this restaurant, Detroit, and I guess the DJ was a 90s fan. And he played each of our individual 90s favorite songs. Went down the list. Did, did, did he not? He was cutting up. And then they went and turned it up. We trying to eat breakfast. Why you playing that at breakfast? And you know, I'm a musician, so you know, I'm hearing chords and arrangements. Man, I told them if they play Atomic Dog, I'm gonna just backslide. My goodness, don't play that. Play that. Don't play that. Yeah, but it's certain songs that remind you of stuff. Oh, see, I can't talk like that. Somebody just so saved. That's okay. You, 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 you save it, and everybody in here, so. The old music don't have no effect on you. But some of that music make me want to boogie. <laughs> I put some cardboard on the ground and go to... <laughs> Spin it all on <laughs> Yeah, sir, you know certain songs. You know! Man, don't y'all front on me like that. You know certain songs. Amen. You pulling out Shazam. <laughs> you know that. Once you pull out Shazam, you ain't saved no more. It's, it's fin you finna go down a real dark path. Nah, Apple Music suggesting stuff for weeks. You in trouble. Yeah, but certain songs are triggers. Remind you of some old, you know, you married and happily married and stuff now. But remind you of some old skeezer. You remember her. Don't try to act like, oh, see, God has cast that into the sea. Not, not when purple rain come on. <laughs> when purple rain come on, she swim right back out. <laughs> she do like, she do the dance of a dolphin on top of the water. <laughs> Where'd she come from? <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Y'all know, I'm being real. That's why the devil did all of this. Certain songs, movies, fragrances. Fragrances. Amen. Amen. You smell that white linen. <laughs> Susie Q used to wear that. That was a real name. Susie Q. <laughs> yeah, fragrances, places, all of these things can all be triggers that flip switches in your body. Yep. Yep, car was just riding normal, a normal six four, until you hit them switches. <laughs> what happened? So I hit the switch. All of her acting a fool. <laughs> them switches. <laughs> It was just a normal, it was a normal car. <laughs> yeah, but it flips switches in your body. Listen, you want God controlling the switch, not you. Amen. Amen. I gave these switches to God. I had them yanked out <laughs> and duct taped all the wires. I don't mess with them switches no more, so nope, nope, nope. So you got to, Amen. Listen, when you get lonely, when you get sad, when you need comfort, let the comforter of the Holy Ghost comfort you and not 
what you used to do. Amen? This is practice makes perfect behavior. You got to practice. I, you got to practice this stuff and you got to just keep doing it. People tell me, brother, pastor, I just, I just keep failing. Keep trying. Amen. Amen. Keep trying, man. Keep trying. You got a lot to overcome because you did a lot. Or a lot was done to you. It's a lot to overcome, man, but keep trying. You're going to get there. Amen. That's what the comfort of the Holy Ghost is. Help you get there. Holy Ghost will speak to you if you listen. He'll direct you if you follow. Amen. The longer you walk out deliverance, the further away the old man will be from you. The more distance you put between you and who you were, temptation becomes less tempting. Amen. Amen. However, this is not an occasion to feel you are above who you were. Because had it not been for God's power, you would still be bound. So recognize that it's not you, not your will, and not your power. But it's by God's power that we are all saved. Therefore, if we stick close to him and his will, we will not fall. Amen. 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 Used to love that song by the Winans. It's so good to know he'll be there whenever I fall. But it's better to know that I don't have to fall at all. Powerful. Powerful song. Jude 24. Now unto him that is able to keep you from Fallen, present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and ever. Glory. Amen. 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 